Welcome to this second video about the workbooks and spreadsheet which accompany nanocoatings, principles and practice, all freely downloadable from the website. In the first video we discussed many of the individual workbooks, now I want to look at just one of them on DLVO. DLVO theory, which is all about stabilising your particles in suspension, has a fearsome reputation, quite deservedly so. And if we turn off everything except the first term, which is the Hamaker attraction, van der Waals attraction, all particles attract each other, then we find that it depends on the radius of the particle and inversely on the distance between the particles. And we have this plot here, and it goes down to below 10 kBT. This is units of Boltzmann temperature, where 1 kBT is the normal energy at room temperature for moving particles around. And it's generally agreed that we need something like 20 kBT to get stable particles. That's plus 20, and here we're at minus 10 already. So on their own, particles will attract each other and will clump. So we need to turn on some protection. And the first thing we typically tend to do in aqueous solutions is to add some charge stabilization via this Debye term. It depends on many things, but of course it depends on the radius, and it depends on the distance, and it depends on the ionic strength, and this k to the minus 1, all sorts of things. Now, when you put on a zeta potential of something like 20 millivolts, you get a stabilization from the Debye term of about 6 kBT, but that's nowhere near enough to stabilize things. But I just want to show one other thing. If you have it in an ordinary solvent with a dielectric constant, say, 10, then the Debye term is very small. So really this charge term only works in the high dielectric constant of water. And let's make another mistake. Instead of changing solvents, let's change concentration of ions in the solvent. So we've got 6 kBT here. Let's foolishly make this one molar. And you see that we've lost a lot of the stabilization because the charge around the particle is now hidden by this strong concentration. So let's return it to a lower strength. So now we need to put on something like 50 millivolts. And when we have a 50 millivolt zeta potential, then we find there's this strong divide term heading way over 25. And even when it's fighting against the van der Waals Hamaker term, the net result is that we've got a barrier of uh, greater than 25 kBT. So this is going to be stable in water. But suppose we don't have water, or suppose we can't have a high phi, then we have to use steric stabilization which is this term here. It depends on the radius, it depends on the distance between them, and it depends on this factor delta, which is the thickness of the stabilizing shell. So if I make that one nanometer, you get this very funny charge stabilization shape, which is nothing much happening. So you're getting all the attraction from van der Waals, and then suddenly charge stabilization kicks in, and the particles are stable at a distance greater than 2 nanometers, i.e. twice the thickness of the shell. So if I make that 2 nanometers of shell, then it's stable up to 4 nanometers. So that's great. What could possibly go wrong? The answer is this Flory Huggins term. The steric stabilization works by the polymer or whatever sticking out. For that to happen, the polymer must be happy in the solvent environment. And happiness is encoded in the Flory Huggins chi parameter. This is all explained in the book. But the point is that as the solvent gets worse for the stabilizer, the Flory Huggins parameter gets larger. So let's make it 0.4. Nothing happens. So we can use a bad solvent. 0.45. Nothing happens. It doesn't matter how bad the solvent is. 0.49. Still nothing happens. And then we make it 0.51 because we've just made the solvent a little bit worse. And now we have a catastrophe. Not only do we not have steric stabilization, but we have steric attraction. When it goes over this Flory Huggins limit, the particles positively want to clump together. And how many of us have had in our formulation lives a 
find a stable solution and then we've just made a small change to the solvent and the whole stuff crashes out. This Flory Huggins explanation is there. All this is explained in more detail in the book. You're free to use this spreadsheet yourself anytime. It's free to download, but we hope it'll encourage you to buy the book.